So John chapter 8, verse 12 says, Then Jesus spoke again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus' comment in verse 12 nicely breaks down into four phrases. And so that's what I want to do, is I want to slow roll through the red-lettered part of this verse and break down what Jesus said into four parts. It starts off, of course, with Jesus' identification, his ID as light of the world. The first phrase is, I am the light of of the world. And we may just gloss over that getting to, you know, when he's when he's spiritually punching the Pharisees or when the Pharisees are, you know, making themselves look uh, dumb. But I am the light of the world is a huge phrase. Jesus is telling us about himself, his relationship to the Father, his relationship to all of creation. It's big. And we get so comfortable with who is Jesus as it meets our needs, and we tend to ignore those things that make him multifaceted or more complicated or make our head hurt. And I am the light of the world is one of those. What does he mean when he says he is the light of the world? Well, light symbolizes purity, you know, innocence, holiness. Light often symbolizes truth, where you're teaching light to somebody. Illumination, inspiration. Light is also guidance. All you have to do is be in the dark trying to go somewhere and not wanting to fall over the couch, right? Uh, so light is purity, light is truth, light is guidance. And when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he's not saying he's one candle among many. He is saying he's the sun giving life, giving light to our planet. He's the source of purity, truth, and guidance. He's the ultimate source of light to all of humanity, to all of creation. It really transcends our sun as it were. And not only does he make this declaration about who he is as being light, but there's another layer to it. This is one of those phrases in the Gospel of John. The phrases are called I am phrases. I am phrases. Jesus says I am the light of the world. And that, that I am echoes all the way from Exodus chapter 3. The use of I am by Jesus goes all the way back to Exodus 3 when Moses is before the bush not burning, you know, not being consumed by the fire, and he asks God's name, and God says, I am who I am. Jesus is tapping into that name of God, Yahweh, when he makes I am statements. When Jesus says, I am the Lamb of God. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Or, I am the light of the world. He's making a declaration about himself, but he's also targeting all the way back Thousands of years to when Moses asked for God's name and God said, I am. It's about identity. It's also about continuity. And we need both of those. Jesus as the light of the world. We need to be living in that light. Seeking the stability that his light provides to us. We need to seek Jesus' light. And by that I mean we need to pursue. We need to chase after. We need to spend time and effort 
reaching into his teachings for moral and ethical guidance when we're trying to navigate the complicated existence we have in the modern world. He's written that guidance down for us so that we have easy access to it. And too often we go about our own way. This is what I want to do. This is the way I want to do it. Until we get in trouble and then we go to the light for some kind of rescue. We don't turn on our car's headlights until we realize we're in a field. And that would be just reckless endangerment if we were doing that on the streets. Reckless endangerment. When I see a car that doesn't have its headlights on and it's dusk or dawn, I always wonder if they just forgot. When I see a car at night without their headlights on, I wish I had a way to tell them that their headlights... I mean, the dashboard lights up. you got to know your headlights are off. It's like, oh my goodness. So, you know, when you're going to make a turn and you look down the street to see if there's another car, you need to not only look for pedestrians and cyclists and motorcyclists, but you got to look for cars that don't turn on their headlights because they want your insurance payment or something. But too often, you and I, Bible-believing Christians who love Jesus, live our lives with the light of Jesus turned off. We're the car in the dark, driving recklessly. And the saints around you are hopefully trying to figure out a way to tell you to turn your headlights on. Because you're a danger to yourself and a danger to others. So when Jesus says he is the light of the world, that's what he's talking about. He's purity. He's truth. He's guidance. And he's here for us. The sun is shining on us. If we'll just open our eyes. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land, right? Because it's an I am statement, because it's an I am statement, Jesus is connecting himself to the God of the Old Testament. There's not an Old Testament God and a New Testament God. There's just one God. And Jesus is connecting himself to that unchanging nature. He's the same. The Jesus standing there talking to these Pharisees in the temple is the same God who is talking to Moses at the burning bush that is not consumed. And in today's society where everything seems to radically change, forget changing in a decade, things change in like a New York minute now. In this world of instability and radical change, don't we need stability? We need a foundation we can trust. We need confidence. We need an anchor. We need a harbor in the storm that we can be safe. And that's what Jesus is saying by connecting his I am statement all the way back to Exodus. God is unchanging. God is stable. In the midst of our shifting values and uncertainties, we can cling to him because he's an unmovable rock. He's a safe harbor, my friends. First phrase. 